Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, imagine this. That Ananias and Sapphira had graces that they never stepped into. Because, because, look what takes place. Their whole reason for life was to serve Peter. The only reason why God has them alive is to serve Peter. Think about this. The only reason why God has Ananias and Sapphira alive is to bring pleasure to Peter. That's the only reason why they're alive. The only reason why God is breathing oxygen in them is to serve Peter, sow into Peter, listen to Peter, help Peter with his ministry. That's the only reason why Ananias and Sapphira is alive. So when Ananias chose not to do it, God takes him, kills him. When Sapphira chooses not to do it, God kills her. Saints, do you know the spirit of the Lord was talking to me about this? He said, son, the only reason why I gave them a day was because I wanted them to use their day in the direction of Peter. I wanted them to listen to his teachings, serve him, help him out, sow to him, please him, bring him peace, bring him comfort. Their life was assigned with purpose to Peter. And when they chose not to do it, I just took them out their body and sent them to hell. And the Lord told me that both of them are in hell today. How many, where do you think Samson is? I, I want to see some answers on here. Where do you think Samson is? Do you think he in heaven or hell? Just think deep. Just think deep. Just think deep. All right. Okay. Lema solo la mondia capala zico peledia. Repe kestia. Now, I want you to, um, everybody, I want you to think for five seconds. Just think for five seconds. And, and, and think again. Think again. What do you think? Uh, Samson is. I want you to think again. What do you think Samson is? Now, um, why I ask you? Because I know where he is. I actually kind of know where he at. Samson took a donkey jawbone and destroyed the Philistines. That was before that Delilah situation. Now, I want you to catch this. The donkey jawbone, it represents the seed. The donkey jawbone represent the seed. And he takes, this when he's in his prime, when he's listening to God and he's protecting that hair covenant. He takes the donkey jawbone, sows it, and watch this. God used the foolish things to confound the wise. God is using this donkey jawbone as a means of victory for Samson. And the jawbone is a jawbone of a what? A donkey, which is considered a foolish animal. But it's to confound the what? The wise. 
because it is the wisdom of God concealed in something that seems small, foolish, and irrelevant. And that's what the seed is, my God. It's something that seems small, foolish, and irrelevant, but, yes, but yet it births abundant life. It births more than enough. It births you being a giant, you being big, you being gigantic, you being uh, a ruler over much. See, uh, King Jesus says something powerful that if you be faithful over a few things, that means that things have a quantity to it. It says, a few things. If you be faithful over the quantity, your life re will receive the best quality. Think about this. If you be faithful over the 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 the, the quantity. God, you unlock God's quality. Wow. I never saw that. Isn't that amazing? There's some of you all that listen to me so intently that my words are inside of your body, your soul. There's some of you all that follow me so strong that my words live inside of your bones. And, and, and when, I promise you, when, when you get to that place, oh, it's the highest level of joy. And it's the highest level of strength. And it's the highest level of uh, liberty and purpose. Life start making sense. Life start making sense. See, saints, um, the woman, her life didn't make sense because she left Adam. Adam was where her life was. So she went to go speak to a serpent and she's confused. Of course she's going to be confused because the clarity is not inside of a mindset, it's inside of a man. So I want you to catch this. Ananias and Sapphira, their jobs, their assignment is not just to multiply in children. Even though they're married together, their assignment is Peter. So Ananias and Sapphira, imagine, they got plans. They're working on stuff, blah, blah, blah. But see, Ananias, Ananias, he, his life on earth is for Peter. Saints, that's why... Uh, do you know that you have the abilities to do many things? But your divine ability is carrying your happiness. Did you just catch what I just said? You have the ability to do many things. You have the ability to think many things. But it's the divine thought that's carrying your soundness, your wisdom. You could see many things. But it is your vision from God that's carrying your strength. Wow. You can hear many things, but it is the word that's carrying your faith. You can speak many things, but it is prophesying, decreeing the word that's carrying life. This is so profound to me. Ananias and Sapphira, their job was to sow into Peter. Hereby we find something in the New Testament. All the Lord Jesus is looking for is, 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 is where, where, where you standing with that seed, Ananias? Where you at with yours? That was his only assignment. And, and saints, he hides the money and God strips him out of his body. Because that was his only assignment. To help his apostle go forth. Now saints, 
Here's what's so glorious. The presence of God doesn't give you 15 assignments if you're struggling with one. What he magnifies the one assignment like it's 15. Saints, do you know that people, they have children and forget the assignment? Do you know that people get new houses and forget the assignment that God wants you to pray in that house? God wants you to exalt him in, his, in their house, in their house. Switch the assignment. Do you know some people get cars and forget the assignment of why God gave them the car? Saints. If you can't look at your vehicle the same way when you got it and say, Lord, thank you so much for this vehicle, there's a, there's, a, there's a fragment of corruption inside of you. That's a strong statement. If you can't look at anything that God has given you and say, Lord, I thank you for this, there's a fragment of evil that lives in you. Now you can cut it off by start giving thanks. You can cut it off. That's the beauty of the spirit life. You can cut off anything that's operating that's not supposed to be there. But for now on, for the rest of 2021, how about you go around thanking God for everything you had? You know, I looked at my clothes the other day and I said, Lord, thank you. I looked at everything that I possess and I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I do it all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. You forget to thank God for some socks. See, some of y'all, your socks got holes in it now. It look like a rat bit the heel. You got heel socks, healy. Socks on. Some of y'all, you're going to have to throw your socks away. When you put your clothes in the washer and it don't help it, like it still smells the same, baby, you're going to have to throw that out, baby. You, you, it looked like you was playing tennis with Serena Williams. Just, just playing tennis with Serena. It looked like you was playing tennis with Serena Williams. You, Serena, you Venus. You was playing, you look like Venus, Serena. Just hitting it, hitting it. Hitting balls, hitting balls. It doesn't be the only balls you hit. Hit, hit, hut, hut, hut. Hitting balls. Look the hitting balls. You know when a woman bitter, she just get out of a bad relationship and she playing tennis, she hit the ball stronger. It does hit the referee. Ah, what? Oh, I can't see. Hey, time out. Time out. Since when I was in high school, I, I did, true story, people used to send me signals. I didn't know what it meant until I got older. So, it was do that little thing. How, how you do it? How do you know how to do it? See, God knew, I, God knew the route that I was going to take. Like, like, what, 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 you got some food in your mouth, girl? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Blessed be God. Just get out of a bad relationship. They, they be hitting the balls harder and talk a play. Talk about. Be, be up there just hitting the ball harder. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 16. Okay, let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Saints, do you know how powerful this text is? 
is telling you that the Holy Spirit works in you to create pleasure. This is pleasure power. There's about three people on here that want some pizza. <laughs> oh, there's three people on here that's thinking about pizza. You, you think about pizza, I just seen it. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2. <laughs> I saw three people on here started thinking about pizza, the slices. <laughs> Look at verse 3. Hey, <laughs> hey, how about, how about, Here's what I do, even at my, at the conference, the next conference I have, pizza, every, just, not every day, because you probably get tired of it, but we'll find a way to work something out. Some good pizza. Pizza tastes so good, make you want to slap. Whoosh. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, 13, moving along strong, moving, <laughs> moving along strong. For it is God <laughs> which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at this here. Uh, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Look what it's telling you right here. That God actually works in you with pleasure power. Wow. He works in you imparting pleasure power inside of you. Wow. Look, look what this text saying here. That it is God that works in you transferring pleasure teachings Ideas, mindsets, thoughts. And then not only does he work it in you, he gives you the desire to do it. And then it says both to will and to do. So he works it in you to prepare you. Wow. Wow. See, Ananias had rejected this. God was putting pleasure power. Ananias and Sapphira. God was putting pleasure power in him for Peter. See, the queen of Sheba yielded to hers. See, God had put pleasure power in her. So, so, so she had a will to go see Solomon. I, I, I need to sit at his feet and learn what he's teaching. I need, I need to get his seed inside of my brain, my, my thought life, my, my way of a viewing. I need that inside of me. I need to have his same mind. I need to have his same wisdom. I need to have his same knowledge, his same understanding. I need him to plant himself in me. I need him to birth me in the spirit. She had the will, but then she went go do. So she ends up going to Solomon. Wow. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, you notice what it said of his good pleasure because there's evil pleasure. Evil pleasure makes you go contrary to God and you operate in pride. And pride carries a level of evil pleasure. Arrogance carries a level of evil pleasure. So, so that's why sometimes people chop off at the mouth because they feel good. When they're being rebellious, they feel good when it's like they have their life in their own hands, like they're making decisions. And, and you know what our generation, Satan, the serpent has used this term. I'm a do me. You do you. I'm a do me. And, and that term makes people feel so good. Oh, I'm a do me. You do you. I'm a do me. And that term, it, it, it carries an evil pleasure. And then, you know, there's other terms that was was um, 
uh, that was created by Mark the Stallion. I mean, May, never mind, whatever that was. Um, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tried to come through, but we don't know about the stallion. I think it's the four horsemen in the apocalypse. I'm a savage. <laughs> I'm a savage. You see what I'm saying? People be talking like that. Oh, I'm a savage. Yeah, yeah. You, you look like a savage. You look like you need a sandwich. That's what you need. <laughs> you need some... <laughs> There are about three people on here want Subway eat fresh. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Saints, you know why skinny men get with big women? Because they know they ain't going to be hungry another day in their life. Y'all ain't talking to me. Why you ever wonder why? Because it happened a lot in Africa. Like them skinny men, they real skinny. Like they like a pencil, but they get with a woman that's bigger. Cause they tired of being hungry. They traumatized. And mama left them hungry. They want mama to feed them. Feed me, mama. Feed me. <laughs> you be careful. You up there. You up there sleeping that night. Y'all not even having no pleasure. She up there serving you burgers. <laughs> In the, the saxophone music on, but she ain't came with some spaghetti. <laughs> you hear the music, she ain't came with some ice cream. <laughs> she ain't came with some rice and peas. She got a bucket of donuts. <laughs> Dear and she done turned around. Now she got a new, she got some cheesecake. She done turned around. You like, how you do that there? How do you do that there? Thank you. Dear and then. Always asking them, how come y'all ain't got no children? They don't know what they're doing in the bedroom. They hear that music. We heard that music last night. They didn't know they had an eating buffet challenge. She decided how much hot dog she was going to eat. They had an eating hot dog. Some fish cooking. Dear Nan, and she came in with some fish and rice. Oh, dear Nan. <laughs> My gosh. You never know what be going on. <laughs> no, but that's the secret. That's why them small. That's why them small men be right there. With, with them big old woman, big woman, because they know, they know, blessed be God, she going to cook me something. She ain't, she ain't going to let me go back to my past. She not going. Yeah, that's my funny joke, because I know no big old, I know no, I don't, never mind. <laughs> dear, 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 dear. Second Corinthians, look at this here. For it is God <clears throat> which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. <laughs> Please, sisters, every African man gonna call you queen. Every African man gonna call you queen. That's how they talk. But you gonna find out <laughs> That you're going to be his queen with flies flying up your nose just right alongside of him. And he's going to be at peace with it. 
For it is God which worketh in you. Both to will and to do his good pleasure. For it is God that worketh in you. Both to will and to do his good pleasure. It is God that worketh in you. Both to will and to do his good pleasure. It is God. Now, here's what's happening here. It's God that's actually making it possible for you to create the pleasure. And he's the one that's letting your words hear things that's stirring your faith so that the so that the works of the pleasure can actually be done towards God. Saints, I'm going to show you something in the Bible. The Shunammite woman sees Elisha. Now, we don't know what she saw first. Because <laughs> the Bible doesn't say it. But there was something that she saw that made her perceive. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. There was something that she saw that makes her perceive that he is a man of God. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so why should I say I'm just joking around? So after she perceives, all right, the perception, it creates a conversation with her and the father. Wow. Saints, this is so mighty to me what I'm telling you here. When she perceives, it creates a dialogue between her and the Lord. So if she never steps into the perception, she breaks the door to the conversation. All right. So. So I want, I want you to catch this. So stick with me. No, you got to understand my mind animated. So it's, I'm not laughing at what I'm teaching. My mind is other places too. So here's what's so glorious. <laughs> What, what I'm saying here is that perception made the Shunammite woman actually invite God to talk to her. If she doesn't <laughs> operate in perception. Now, saints, Zendaya is the only baby that I have ever known that like constantly find a way to laugh. Saints, my daughter Zendaya Gloria Holmes, if you don't tell her no joke, She'll laugh with you and if you ask her, why are you laughing? She'll tell you something that's funny in her mind. And the Holy Ghost told me it's the anointing of joy. Because see, my mind, my mind, and see, that's going to be the secret to your strength. The Holy Ghost is going to constantly talk to you about things that's making you joyful because joy is the master of all of your strength. And laughter is the, is, the, um, is the mentor of your liberty. Laughter is the mentor of your liberty because it's a medicine. So all of your mental health, your physical health, there is spiritual authority in laughing. Now, not laughing at people's problems. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about genuine laughter that heals the soul. And that's another part of your healing process is that you're going to need to laugh. Huh? So the Shunammite woman, while the Shunammite woman, she, the Shunammite woman, she over... <laughs> Woman, <laughs> so 
So the Shulamite woman over there, and she looking at Elisha, and because her perception is pure, here's what happens. Now there's a conversation between her and God about how she could help Elisha. Now, now, watch this here. How did she know that he didn't have any food? So watch this here. There's a prophetic anointing flowing on her to discern his needs. Who told her that he was hungry? She didn't hear his stomach growling. Saints, what I'm telling you is that when she has a pure perception towards her man of God, now she's tapping in to where she was created to supply his need. Why did God connect me to his ministry? Why is God having me watching? What is going on in his life that I've been called to bring a solution to. Now saints, I'm showing you something in the text that you probably never saw before. This Shunammite woman is walking in a heavy prophetic grace. Him. The heat is draining his energy 
and he's dehydrated and he keeps on walking. But in all actuality, she has the answer to the things that's making him suffer. But he decides, I, 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 I can be hungry. I just. But, but she becomes the chef to the place where he's hungry. Now she doesn't go to Elisha and say, Elisha, if you're a man of God, why are you hungry? If you're a man of God, why you ain't got no way to lay your head? There's no criticism. She decides 
His peace. I not only want you to be whole, but I want you to feel wholeness. Think about this. It's powerful. And the Shunammite woman becomes an idea catcher from God. She's catching revelation from the Lord in the spirit of where Elisha leads her. Now, watch this here. The Shunammite woman never goes to Elisha and says, you don't minister to everybody. Don't you have somebody that can help you? Because my prophet 